Good afternoon and welcome to the Kakamega High School grounds in the western part of Kenya for the second leg of the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series event. On the commentary booth is Hilary Teller and I'm assisted by my able colleague Mike Kwambo, a proud alumnus of Kakamega High School. Mike. Yes, Hillary. Must be great to be coming back home, Mike. I feel so good to be back home at the place where I nurtured my rugby skills, and it's good to see high-level rugby being played on these grounds. Great stuff indeed, Mike. It's always a good thing to see the gospel of rugby being spread all over the country. Kakamega has in the past uh, been responsible for providing some of the greatest talents in the country and the region, indeed. Indeed, players like uh, Charles Dyer from way back, players like Ian Indimuli, just to name but a few, have featured for Kakamega High School. And right up on there, we'll get on through the lineup of Papanguvu. We have Onyango, Karia Katu, Wagaya, Ongeri, Indi Mulia, Swani, Kisia, Edgar Bere, who's also an alumnus of Kakamega High School, Augustine, Kangeri, Mwale, Wanjala, Alan Omuka, the captain, very, very devastating in the first leg in Kampala, and Peter Kefa will be the fullback. What do you make it on this particular game, Mike? On uh, Papanguvu's lineup? Papanguvu's starting lineup is one that is filled with experience. And young players coming through the ranks, and I think they're going out for the kill. It's quite interesting. They've, they've decided to play Ken Mosetti off uh, the subsequent bench. He's, he's been known to actually have some very interesting footwork. Um, I think he was the MVP in the Great Rift Tennis side tournament, wasn't he? He Two was a very solid player, plays at outside center. He can also play at scrum up, versatile player. All right. Up next up, we'll be seeing the Kifaru lineup. Kifaru is predominantly made up of uh, university students from Kenya. We've got Danman, Langat, Muikia, Tubula, Chogo, Aguko, Otieno, Bundi, Mutuku, Lubisia, Owako, Soi, Otieno, Ochami, and Kivasia. Um, not uh, some of the most commonly known rugby players in Kenya. Uh, we'd have expected to see a little bit more from the Strathmore University team. Well, Strathmore University opting not to fill their players in this match because of the upcoming Kenya Cup semi-final. Anyway, the substitutes bench for UAP Kifaru, Jimmy Mwangi, Thomas Okidia, Greg Danman, Colin Zocheng, Eli Mukaisi, Caleb Kiprotich, Daniel Mubea, and uh, Felix Ocheno. They are coached by former Kenya international fly half Charles T.C. Ngovi. It's interesting that uh, they've actually paired up Charles Ngovi and Tito Duke. Two players who've got uh, interestingly different uh, styles of play. Tito Duke looking at the more direct play and Charles Ngovi, one of the, in, in, in my opinion, intelligent uh, rugby coaches in the country. Maybe it's an issue of uh, opposites attract and uh, <laughs> bringing the best out of them. And right there walking onto your screen is Papa Nguvu uh, in the green strip and UA Piki Faru are the ones putting on the navy blue strip. Well, UAP Kifaru made up of players from Kenyan universities, Papanguvu made up of players from KCB, Homeboys and Mwamba RFC. This is looking like it's going to be a very competitive match. Mike, do you think the fact that Papanguvu had their first game in Kampala on the trot last weekend and having to play their second match against a fresher UAP Kifaru, do you think that will probably affect the course of the game? It will positively for Papa because they already have that much uh, awareness. They've been able to break into the games and they know what to do. It's about the combinations, what they know is going to work for them. Yeah, more importantly is the fact that uh, we've gotten the players who are down in South Africa from the Vodacom 15 team. I would have expected them to have been uh, placed with the franchises, Mike. I would have expected that too, but again, there seems to be have been some sort of agreement between the union and the players, as well as the clubs affected to rest these players because there's still a lot more international rugby action coming up and probably the decision was to keep them fresh. There will be a moment silence after the dignitaries shake uh, the hands of the players and this will be in remembrance of Abadin Shikoi who passed away playing rugby for the Kenyan ladies team and uh, Abadin Shikoi actually was from Kakamega. She was from Kakamega and she passed away close to two years ago. In fact, the anniversary of her death was celebrated on April 29th this year, which was I think on Tuesday. Great uh, warrior, um, great gesture indeed uh, to remember one of uh, Kenya's, one of, one of the finest uh, women rugby players in Kenya in recent times. Yeah, she truly was a lioness and she's at the place where lions and lionesses have nurtured their talent. I think it's only befitting that we give her this honor. Center referee there for the game for the first match today will be Raymond Oruo. Raymond Oruo is definitely not a stranger to this particular ground. I think he may have come here a couple of times while he was still teaching Maseno. 
I'm sober, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Papanguvu captain Alan Omuka. Alan Omuka, um, I was reviewing some of the it's clips from the game last week. He he, he, he was in beastly mode. Huh? Um, he was probably the, what do you call it? Who oh, else from missing okay. out uh, the South With African uh, training camp with the Kenya Freedom? Keep time. And still right. wanting to prove keep a time. point. Of course, one of the players who's been plagued by injuries in recent time, but one who can actually bust into... Um, you know, right. change, change, change a small sort of opportunity into something out absolutely glorious. He literally just bust from nowhere. Yeah, a fit Alan Omuka is a dangerous Alan Omuka. Let's see what he can do. I think now we're stopping for the minute of silence. Why are we doing anything? Let's go, guys. And we're ready to run. This will be game one of match day two of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series being played from the Kakamega High School grounds. For all those joining us from Africa, from Kenya, from across the globe, you're joining us in straight from Kakamega in Western Kenya. And on the commentary today will be Hilary Teller and my able colleague Mike Kwambo. In your picture right now, in blue is UAP Kiparu. We'll be playing against defending champions Papa Nguvu, who. Um, Started on a very emphatic note last week, winning 20, 25 points to 6 in Uganda against uh, a much fancier Renzori outfit. Actually, Hillary, the defending champions of the tournament, Andovu, will be playing in the second game. But Papa Andovu, who fit. <laughs> there I go wrong again. Papa. Papa Nguvu, who finished third in last year's tournament, a very strong side, a formidable side, the one to signal the intent. Blue reached the, quarter, the semi finals. Thanks for the timely correction, Mike. The 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series. It's been overcast in Kakamega for the other part of the day, yeah, yeah. but quite humid, but about 70%. So we may have some showers later on during the course of the day. Turning, turning up. The pitch definitely filling up. Uh, it's very, very uh, encouraging to see that the locals have come in in numbers and in all colors to come around and uh, support this initiative. This is a very good initiative. I mean, the progress done by Kakamega High School and other schools within the region has popularized the game and it's good to see the locals finally embracing it. Set to kick us off from left to right, will be Kifaru. In your picture, there is Harun Lubisia with a ball. Harun Lubisia, one of the more experienced players on the Kifaru side. He started out his club rugby at uh, Rugby Club before moving to Homeboys RFC. He's a student at the Kenya Methodist University where he's studying to be a medical doctor. Very, very versatile player indeed. And um, interestingly, uh, start, uh, starting to become a medical doctor. Let's see how he'll be able to doctor the Kifaru team through this first game for Kifaru in this year's event. Good. <laughs> Opting to kick deep in there, quite quite a great retrieval there by Ngubu, who, um, as expected, are taking the Rukwan approach and um, taking into the physical quarter straight from the Keep moving, keep moving! Yes, and you can see already moving there, and uh, they've secured Get back, the back, back, back. Edgar Abere looking to play it out, which he does. Augustine Lugonzo, man of the match last weekend in Kampala, Back! trying to slice through that's the right, right. defence but stopped and uh, it's still a breakdown but it's advantage uh, Nguvu Papa at this point. They turn over possession. Back, 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 back. With the level of conditioning uh, within these Kenyan outfits in the recent times, you would almost Get expect up! that the game will be won in the uh, collision points. Very definitely, that's where it's going to be. Oh, and that's a big tackle as you talked about the collision points. There's a solid tackle there from Nguvu Papa as the match progresses. Alan Omuka getting himself in an uncharacteristic position where he's stay, 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 stay. He normally is the one who does uh, that to opponents. <laughs> so I guess uh, hold, hold. Uh, a case You're of uh, being brought back to uh, a level to realize that he's also human after all. Yeah, talk about role reversal and uh, also getting a taste of your own medicine anyway. We're in play there. This is uh, the UAP Kifaru. That was Brian Kivasia. He plays for the Mwamba RFC club from Nairobi, Kenya. Taking the ball into contact, George Mutuku, a former Kenya under-19 international, distributing it out wide. That is uh, Alvin Otieno. 
former Western Bulls uh, player. He found Mike the Mike to hold their own in the opening exchanges of the match. Um, and I don't think they've actually let the ball go for more than 20 seconds to the uh, Papanguvu side. They haven't. And actually, Harun Lubisia attempting a drop goal. <laughs> How about that thing of beauty? Harun Lubisia scores the first points of the game from a drop kick. That's the first drop kick scored at the Kakamega High School grounds in the maiden appearance of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series in Kakamega. Yes, and that is the second drop goal of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series. The first coming last week in Kampala when uh, Renzori's Alhaj Manano, who apparently was playing at Bakro, scored for <laughs> Renzori against Papa. You know, there's always been a bit of debate ever since England won the 2003 Rugby World Cup with about 45% of their points coming from the drop kick. And there were very many questions being po uh, placed up regarding the relevance of using drop kicks as point measures as to whether they actually have a higher pointage on three points or they should actually be reduced. Well, no need to reduce it because it's uh, one of those things that requires... Ball! Sometimes comes against... Ball! Anyway, match resumes. Definitely, what would I know? I'm a forward anyway. <laughs> but the forwards who are on record as having scored drop goals. Remember the great Zinzan Luke at the 1995 World Cup. There's, 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 there's insanity that comes very so often and Zinzan Brook was um, one of those uh, strange forwards. <laughs> anyway, now there's nothing strange about this. It is a scrum down. It looks like it's going to be a Papa Putin, Edgar Abere. You'd almost fancy that uh, Papa Nguvu would be rampageous within the contact faces and the set pieces. They look like they have a solid pack and um, if you just look at the body conditioning, um, perhaps it's expected that they'll uh, go around and run all over Kifaru. Yeah, but at the moment they need to get their act right. The scrum down there collapsing. Looks like referee Ray Oru is going to call it again. And it's still going to be a Papa Putin. Edgar Berra there with the ball in his arms. He's an alumni of uh, Kakamega High School, the venue for match day two of the Bamboo Rugby Super Series. Uh, known to have extremely blistering pace, but has never really been given a chance to, to represent the country at the highest level. Talk about uh, hard luck. There was a time he had been voted a uh, player of the season uh, in the seventh version of the game as Augustine Lugonzo breaks again and referee Ray Oruo awards a penalty. There is... Uh, it didn't look like the ball even got off his feet. Huh? We've, we've, we've known him for actually taking those and just running, slicing midway through the defense. Yeah. Referee wasn't too happy with uh, the 10 meters gained in there. And it would appear that... Yes, it would appear that Nguvo will go for points. I can see Peter Kefa gesturing to the points and... Of course, as expected, um, you'd expect some of the forwards uh, re requiring the services of the ball to go around and just stamp the authority earlier on. But I guess prudence dictates that if you're already trailing on three points and you have a chance to slow them in, then conventional wisdom should win, Mike. Yeah, it should. And uh, that's what they're doing, applying conventional wisdom. It looks like uh, Peter Kefa is uh, going to attempt the kick himself. He's been known to attempt the kicks for his club side Mwamba RFC and prior to that when he played for Strathmore Leos. He's all concentration. Peter Kefa smashes it hard, but unfortunately, wide to the right of the upright. And um, scores remain three points to zero. Early days yet. We've just done about six minutes. UAP Kifaru leading Gubu Papa 3-0 here at the Kakamega High School grounds. Match day two of the Bamburi Rugby Super Series brought to you live on Zuku Sports, Channel 301. Ball kicks straight into the arms of Dave Aswani. Dave Aswani, big stocky fellow who... Had a good game in Kampala last weekend as well. Yeah, he had a good game. He's one of those players coming through the ranks at KCB. He's just barely out of his teens. He's 20. Um, there's a lot for him in store. And let's see how he's going to exert himself in this game. Of course, KCB have this capacity role is just groom teenagers who end up becoming beasts in, 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 in very, very short time. Oh, unlucky there from Google. They look like they had it formed. But unlucky knock on coming on in there. They had, I think, a six... 
six versus two uh, situation right in there. Yeah, I think that it was just a matter of uh, a loss of composure. Six v two, you would expect them to do the easy thing. Probably a player just taking his eye off the ball for a minute and dropping the ball. Of course, UAP Kifaru not uh, in a hurry to take uh, that scrum down. In fact, the ball has actually been handed over to uh, Papa Ngubi. It would appear that no, the referee realized the chicken is there by Edgar Berry. <laughs> and um, very interesting what scrummers can do. Eh? Uh, these these halfbacks are just the ones, uh, the cheekiest players on the pitch, if you ask me. There's a joke that goes around they say that halfbacks are a bit of both worlds. They, they think like backs, but they react like forwards. <laughs> as the referee, Ray Oru awards a penalty, quickly taken by Papa as uh, they take the ball into contact. Move, 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 move. It's, it's quite interesting. That is a one-man mole <laughs> holding on three fellows. <laughs> that was twisting and turning and yeah, that expected to be smashed onto the deck. That was Nick Ongeri, uh, plays for the Mwamba club in Nairobi, yeah, 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 yeah. Kenya, come, 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 a come, teacher come, come. by profession, taking the ball. Oh, it was Louis Kisia, I beg your pardon. Louis Kisia, one of the older members of the, uh, the Nguvu Papa squad. No, not the biggest fellow, but did very well to draw in three fellows in there. Took three fellows to bring down Louis Kisia. I think that comes with experience. He's been around on the scene for a while and at this point in time, he knows what to do. Definitely did. I mean, that will definitely signal the fact that Nguvu already showing the direction that they would want to take their game plan on. Yeah, and earlier think, on. Yeah, their game plan will be one that revolves around strength. <laughs> Line out deep within the UA Pikifaru territory. Nguvu will have to retain the ball. Pops out, manages to keep on through. The ball has not bounced away. So when he takes it in, Abere plays it out. Lugondo gets a ball and nice running line in there, but great resolute defending in there by Kifaru, who managed to keep their run. And the referee is playing advantage. It would appear that the ball may have actually been knocked forward in there. Referee calls the advantage and doesn't seem to think that Kifaru will benefit. And great defending in there by UP Kifaru. Yeah, that's great defending. They've kept their heads uh, keeping out of trouble and they, for the moment, have gotten out of jail. You always do realize that in such games that once a defense has stayed very resolute, it eventually might be the telling thing in the entire part of the game. And there you see Alan Omuka doing what he loves best, just pummeling fellows on through. Quick rack out, Edgar Beres, sees numbers out in there. You a Pinguvu, Papa Nguvu rather, sorry, would rather keep the ball in a bit tight because as they're trying to rush the ball around, the defense by Papa is, um, you a Pikifaru is just walking up. Yeah, they are forcing uh, Nguvu Papa into mistakes, rushing them up, then a hurry to pass the ball and causing the occasional uh, knock-on. But this time round, uh, Nguvu Papa gaining ground. Kifaru definitely showing a lot of discipline on the defending line. They have not actually been caught, even once on an offside line, being able to rush backs, spreading left, right and centre, not contesting onto the rack situation and holding their own so far in the game. Maybe it is the discipline that comes with being a student, but these are university students for that matter. And all of a sudden, there's a break by, by UAP Kifaru right there. And uh, <laughs> of all the people, Kevin Soita, you never actually expect a prop to do that. Yeah, justifying my claim that they're university students, they'll have a hint of uh, excitement about them. Kevin Soita spotting the gap and gaining ground for UAP Kifaru. Dynamic show of athletic ability there by Kevin Soita. Usually number one, twos and threes are not expected to gain anything more than three or four years every time they get the ball. Gaining hard 50 meter yards there before being taken down for a scrum down. <laughs> but in this race, Kevin Soita was number one. Ah, definitely indeed. Eh? Definitely Fine. indeed. Meanwhile, it's a scrum down Set. and it's a Papa put in. Edgar Berry plays it in. It's a clean ball from UAP Papa, keeping possession. For some reason, they just didn't manage to get that off. And there's a good counter coming in there from UAP Kifaru. And all of a sudden, Haran Lubisi has a ball. He just needs fellas run off. He doesn't need them. It takes four fellas to bring down Haran Lubisi. What is happening to this Papa Nguvu uh, defense line? The Papa Nguvu defense line is, what can I say, slow to react. And it would appear perhaps having the game played in Kampala last week may have worked to their disadvantage because it would appear that their, their opponents may have reviewed those uh, tapes and they realized where the chinks are in the armor. Sure, sure. 
Meanwhile, it is a line out uh, to Kifaru. 12 minutes of, uh, of the game already played in the first half. Ball, that's Only fine. first game in leg two of the Bamboo Rugby Super Series. And who would have thought uh, UAP, Pap, UAP uh, Kifaru would be leading against Papa Ngu with three points to zero at this stage of the game? Well, based on the statistics, uh, based on squad selection, it is a very unlikely score, but that is um, the way matters are at the moment. Probably for Papa, it's about uh, them settling into the game. It seems like they're taking time. They gain nothing from that line out. If anything, it's Kifaru on the attack. And uh, making more forays into the Papa territory. They're now getting into the Papa 25. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. This is looking like uh, something exciting to come out of this. Mutuku distributes the ball there. Run off! Get off! This time not managing to get so much space to run like he did many minutes ago. Ball is turned over. So. The referee was definitely spot on on that in there. Very unlucky uh, holding of the ball in there, resulting to scramble and Papangu just seemed jaded, huh? totally jaded in the first uh, 12, 13 minutes of this game. Jaded is too strong a term to use at this point of the game, but that's the, that's how things are. Coach, He's looking jaded. They're looking out of sorts. Point. Ready. Struggling to get it together. Set. And the more this happens, the more the advantage outside. Could, uh, outside. shift outside. towards uh, Kifaru. Much better scrum there by Papanguvu. Ball getting straight down, hold, hold, hold. clear, clearly kicked off from the 22 meter line. Backups deep into the UAP Kifaru line, and they're keen on spreading the ball out. Um, I'm not so certain whether that was very wisely done in there by Alvin Oteno, but managers keep on to the ball before the ball goes on out for a line out in for UAP Kifaru. Assistant coach there, UAP Kifaru's Tito Duke. I think trying to back down a couple of orders. Tito Duke himself, a very established player, having uh, participated in various Super Series events. Even winning the Super Series, uh, to the best of my memory, in 2008 with the then existing UAP Rhinos. A former Kenyan international uh, midfielder, he played at inside and outside center at various stages of his career. Anyway, the line out there won by Papa. Augustine Lugonzo distributes the ball as they, that's Nikungere taking the ball into contact as Papa surge forward from the mall. Go on, get off! Huh? Well, he just doesn't know how to shun away from a contact situation, just like a lovely old school forward would be expected to do. Papa and Gubu definitely trying to show their level of dominance in there. And you can actually see every time Papa and Gubu take the ball in, the Epic Kifaru players are not so keen on trying to win the ball. They just turn on out and all of a sudden they end up getting the mistakes done to their advantage and Papa and Gubu just turn over the ball. There was absolutely no one who looked like they were in for the tussle. The Epic Kifaru just sit back, the first man tackles the ball and they fan on out. That seems to be a strategy employed by head coach Tito Duke. Meanwhile, uh, UAP's uh, number eight, Kevin Bundy, looks uh, uncomfortable Green. and is getting medical attention. It looks like he's the one who took in the tackle, but after he did it all alone, there were about three or four bodies moving all over, so perhaps a loose knee uh, may have had some effect on the head. Scotty Zolago there. Coach for Papa and Gugu, looking extremely animated, definitely not too happy about the scoreline. Himself, one of the few players who started playing as a backline player and eventually finished in the forwards. Finishing in the forwards in 2008, when uh, I beg, yeah, it was 2008 when the Lions, I beg your pardon, won the no, no, no. Super Series. Olago was part of that squad. I'd mentioned earlier Tito Duke winning it in 2008, it was in 2009 that he won it with the UAP Rhinos. Anyway, it looks like we're getting back into play. Both of them centers coaching different teams, but having played for Kenya, and I think they probably shared a couple of test matches together. They did. Uh, one interesting fact is that they both wound up their careers as forwards. I, th I, I, I always believe that that is where the telling point in rugby comes on through. It confirms that forwards are the ones who run a rugby match. <laughs> Definitely indeed. Aaron Libisia taking his time to take the penalty kick in there. Uh, Papanguvu look 
very, very uh, excitable right now. The last three minutes, I've seen them foraying in um, on, on a much stronger level within the UAP Kifaru side of the pitch. However, they've Buckland. not had the patience and um, the level of discipline to execute what they're required to do. So a couple of mistakes made on their side have just been gifting UAP Kifaru possession. And um, if this should actually go on, then they'll probably end up being their own worst enemies. Very true, Hillary. And it'll take a lot from them in terms of composure to avoid self-destructing. Meanwhile, that kick goes into touch. And it's a line-out. It's going to be Kifaru's throw-in. Ezra Langat throwing the ball in through. Despite the fact that it overshoots onto the jumper, manages to get onto you. You have Kifaru of either gone and uh, put the players in the right places or they've been extremely fortunate in the opening sessions of this game. Dan Oteno running on the ball, manages to get the ball at very nice show of the step there by Brian Kivasia. Gets down just barely about 10 meters from the try line. And all of a sudden, you see UAP Kifaru's pick and drive working on George Mutuku get looking at getting the ball out. Play, play. Dynamism would be the key to be required in here. It's worked for them in other parts of the pitch. This is a much slower one. Decides to do a miss on top. Gets about Haron Lubisia. Great ball going on through. Shimi and Shami left right by Israel. So he, so he goes down. Ball still available from the UAP Kifaru end of the pitch. George Mutuku gets a much flatter, yes, definitely. In a much flatter Israel Langat who's stopped in his tracks. Still, they look like they have possession unless they've been held up high. Ball manages to come out. So it uh, does not hold it on well. It bumps on and out. It's... Oh, it, it, it became a messy affair there, and the referee gives a call back to Yubi Kifaru because Nguvu just knocked it on. I mean, every call has been going fortuitously to Kifaru's way. They, 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 they look like they have the gods of rugby on their end today. They have the gods of rugby definitely on their end. No, no, no. It's for them to appease the off, gods by off a kick. using whatever chances that are coming their way. They are not far out from the Papa try line, and they should visit it from this course the interplay within the last two minutes showing it's all on the players you can see them heaving very heavily the chest pumping up and down showing the great level of work that has been happening over the last five minutes so they still have a put in you can see George Mutuk already backing Coach. instructions to Aaron Lubisi in there uh, Fine. Um, I am always very aware of a scrum of giving instructions before the ball has already been uh, secured because they often more or less are not end up thinking about the next move before the ball comes out. And John Mutuku does not use, yes, uh, that was coming, did not use two of the players and there's been a cross in there and they lose possession. So Papanguvu get the penalty in there. George Mutuku just not utilizing all the players he had at his disposal and managing to cross through some of them. He should have actually released it to one or two of those players earlier on. Yeah, he should have. There's a player running off his side, both from the left and from the right. Easily release them, maintain continuity. He probably was looking for a gap to exploit and uh, go for glory. It didn't work for him. George Motuko plays his club rugby for the University of Nairobi Min Machine. Very established player. Um, and also been capped uh, for Kenya at age grade level. Grown much, much bigger than he was when he was playing at uh, under-20 level for Kenya, but still looks like he's a wily brain, a wily rugby brain. Numbers yeah, the rugby counts, brain counts, doesn't counts, go numbers, wrong. Counts, counts, the body numbers. may expand, it counts, may shrink, counts, it counts, may numbers. grow tall, as experienced by <laughs> some of us in, <laughs> in the commentary booth. <laughs> I, 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 I always have the potential of expanding in my defense. Um, Francis Akatu getting the ball on in, driving, almost being driven out of the pitch. They manage to return, but Edgar Berre picks it up, decides to run it, manages to move on through, and oh, unfortunately, when it looked like they were getting something, Nick Ongeri just manages not to keep the ball in his hands, and for Twitter's knock on in there. And I guess you picky far rules, I mean, story will go on. That's, that's been the better part of the first half. They, they, have been, they, have been, they have been very disciplined on defense, and it would appear that just the fact that they've maintained their line and their form has managed to push Papa and Guvu into a myriad or a tyranny of errors. Exactly, Hillary. Um, you are picky far who are just Couch. keeping it simple, maintaining their Bind. discipline, Bind. keeping their composure. Set. And getting advantage. Once again, they're in possession. Uh, and the ball is spilt now by the UAP Kifaru. 
players. Un- unlucky there by Brian Kivasia. He, he just looked like the ball just you know shot through his hands. Huh? Looked like it was an involuntary pass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Edgar Berry gets a chance to place in a scrum down for Papanguvu. Papanguvu, of course. Definite uh, set of experienced players within their their stable there. Expected to, um, why initially expected before the game to come around and dominate this game, but um, I guess uh, that's what panned itself for just creating predictions and the truth of the matter is that the proof of the pudding will always be in the game itself. The proof of the pudding is in the game. Kipanu have come into this game with their tails up. Everything is going their way. Another penalty awarded to them by referee Ray Oruo from another Papa infringement. Nothing seems to be going right for Papa. Papa looking yeah, yeah, yeah. like they want to keep on using the shorter side and they probably need to see if at all they can get other options. Maybe getting the forwards playing off the shoulders of the fly halves would assist because uh, getting the ball from the base from the scrum half has clearly not worked to great effect as you expected because that would only work if you're playing against a team that doesn't tackle well but every time they do that, two or three tackles in, they lose the ball so perhaps a change of tactic might be required, maybe to get a couple of balls off the fly shoulder may give them some level of uh, momentum. Yeah, these variations, as you say, will give Papa the momentum and uh, it should also throw Kifaru into a spin. But at the moment the play <coughs> proceeds and the referee calls that not straight. Well, not straight, green. The referee will set down another scrum down in there. I'd fancy having uh, the bulky locks, uh, Nick Ongeri and Steve Wakai running off the shoulders of Augustin Lugonzo. Augustin Lugonzo also has a very devastating step to his mix. So when you have your forwards running off a very unpredictable flyer, it will probably add a lot more value Coach. as opposed to just picking off from Fine. the base. And you see, the thing, of, the thing about picking off the base, it kills off the, the flyer from the game. They, they are not managing to get Augustin Lugonzo to utilize his full skill set to great effect. Francis Akatu there, loose head prop, very experienced player in his own right, looking like he just wants to go around and marshal his players on, because the game is still in its uh, earlier phases, only 20 minutes played in this half, Um, drop goal uh, scored within the first four minutes, there's been no other score line from then on, nice tackle in there, very very nice tackle, a nice turn over the there, I think they might get a penalty there because they don't need the ball, because the player looked like they held the ball down, referee seems okay with it, because the ball is still on you at Faru side, I would have thought that would have been a penalty, this year booting the ball far and wide, Peter Kefa on the counter attack, very slippery player, he gains uh, a lot of ground for Papa, they retain possession from that ball, it would appear that the referee was not happy with the footing and someone may have said something that might cost him 10 minutes in the match depending on the severity of what was said the referee looks like he's going into his pockets as a captain Alan Umuka off the hey, 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 hey. running absolute warning to him last by 11. next warning out no 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 Edgar Bere. you 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 no 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 we'll done. Talking to done. My done referee Alan Umuka trying to intervene on his behalf but uh, very um, very stern referee there. <laughs> Did not say a lot other than done, done, and gave a final warning. Nice cover tackle there by Papa Nguvu. Great run there by Alvin Oteno. Almost managed to sneak on through. And Papa are on the defense this time around. It will be keen to see just how well they'll be able to defend. Because Kifaro have been able to show over and over again that they have a disciplined approach to playing onto the ball. And that is Kisia of... Oh! <laughs> Unlucky, unlucky bounce on the pass in there. Just manages to get off through the chest of, um, I'll get the confirmation in a minute, uh, Dan Otieno it was. He got the ball and he just flew off his chest and it looked like he already had a lot of support to be able to assist him in there. Very, very unlucky right there. If you're just joining us. can only imagine what would have happened had that move been made. Kifaru would have been ahead. Father. Edgar Berra there, he hits his body language, trying to shrug it from the referee who's been um, given a last warning uh, for a bit of chit chat. So you can see him trying to really whisper the instructions lest he gets uh, the wrath of the referee. Edgar Berra places the ball in, quick ball out, 
Louis Kissier decides to pop it on out and great run there by Peter Keffer. Gains a hard 40 meters. Great, great move there from the base of the rug by Louis Kissier. That, that was great, but there's nobody running off uh, Peter Keffer. But the referee still awards uh, a penalty to Papa. That was a great uh, pick from the base of the scrum. Um, show of courage uh, by Louis Kissier. Picking it um, when least expected. Augustine Lugonzo picking his spot, kicking it deep within the. Oh, very nice kick in there. And uh, Papangu get a line out opportunity to score deep within the UAP Kifaru uh, territory. Great, great, great interplay in there. Louis Kisia, Peter Keffer, yeah. and great blue, blue, penalty blue, blue, blue. kick yeah, done there you. by Augustine Lugonzo. You get a feeling that uh, perhaps Papa and Google are finally getting into their groove, Mike. Yeah, all of 24 minutes, uh, but they're finally getting into their groove. They're looking to claw back the 3 0 scoreline that uh, is not in their favor. Line out on the. Great ball being held in there by Louis Kisia, who started the move deep in his territory. And uh, Papa and Google are trying to get their mall moving. And it is moving. Oh, it broke up for some reason. It looked like it was well set. They still retain the possession. They look like they want to reset again. Francis Akatu had the head in there, getting the ball, driving on through, manages to retain it. Ball comes on out. They try to do a pick and drop. UAP Kifaru maintain their discipline within the defense. Referee doesn't seem to like that, and Papa Nguvu get a penalty. Get off, get off, faster. Get off, get off. Feels like forever since the last uh, points were scored in this match, Mike. Scrum down. And uh, you, Papa Nguvu decide to go for the scrum down as opposed to the line out. Um, I thought they actually had a very, very respectable line and I fancied them to try and just punish UAP Kifaru because they did extremely well in the previous line out. Still, Edgar Bere holds on to the ball. They might probably let to do yet another pick, but. Um, I'm not too certain Coach. whether this will actually go on through and coyly Coach. deceive the UAP Kifaru backrows. Last time around it was expected. They actually put all their shoulders in expecting the ball to be kicked out. And out of nowhere, Luke Isia picked the ball and got a hard, uh, hard 10 yards before unleashing Peter Kefa, who got another 30. And hence and why we, the money get themselves five meters from the trail. And the, the drive is very, very strong. Referee has his hand on it. would look like if they do not score, there may be a penalty try awarded there the referee decides to play on and papa and Google keep the ball in there still not quite clear where the ball is but the referee is still placing his arm out advantage will be for papa and calls for a knock on he will have to play the advantage decides to put a penalty mike from from uh, from previous uh, i mean from from from, from from general rugby knowledge if someone does get a penalty from a scrum down Shouldn't that actually be a penalty try? It should, unless uh, <laughs> Guys, we're reading from a different in, stay script. In, stay in, stay but again, in, the referee's decision is final. Let's see right. yeah. how this goes from here. Interesting call there. I thought he'd actually call for them yeah. collapsing the scrum. And uh, of course, that since, since that is very dangerous, it's actually a level of dangerous play that can affect Crowd. not only the perpetrator, Fine. but also the opponent. And I thought that, that was what he was calling for. Still penalty elected to go down on a scrum. Of course, this is where we expected Papangu to be extremely strong. And from the last uh, scrum where they literally will come to UAP Kifaru, we expect the same to happen. A referee calls for a penalty and um, stops a game. Would appear that come down. referee yeah, the might be sending That's someone warning, off. Right? Yeah, but Se second penalty, last warning. Yeah, but second penalty, last warning. Yeah. And uh Epiki Faru getting lucky there. Very, very lucky not to get someone sent off uh, because uh, they've had two scrum downs Crouch. that the referees play for penalty advantage. That's a third scrum in five. about five minutes. And uh, Set. Papa and Google look like they're on the onslaught. Scores are still a 3 0 for Kifaru. Sorry, apologies. In the earlier round, the scores have been inverted the and they've go, been go, since go. corrected. It's UAP Kifaru 3 and Papa and Google 0. As a try has been awarded. No, the referee calls for a knock-on. 
very unfortunate piece of land there. It's, it's, it's definitely very disheartening to, to scrimmage more than five hard yards and uh, for the number eight to just knock the ball on. Not too certain whether uh, <laughs> Devo and Aswani will be looked upon very optimistically by his teammates. <laughs> For the next scrum, they'll probably get another back. And yes, indeed, they actually put Louis Kissy at the back. Often is the case, huh? He spoke too soon, <laughs> and it happened, Hillary. Yes. You'd be able to fancy them to win this against the head, and that's where uh, a stronger a stronger pack becomes very dangerous. Because if you already have a number eight, you can control the ball quite easily and well. Then that's a definite point. Edgar Bere being pulled out of the game. He was given a caution a couple of moments ago by the referee, Rio Ru, would it be a tactical change or perhaps the technical bench electing to ensure that he doesn't get sent off? Uh, he probably could have pulled something. Fine. We'd also have to wait for that Set. information. Because he doesn't seem too comfortable running off the pitch. Michael Wanjala on in his place. Michael Onjala, uh, one of the point scorers in the last weekend's matches in Uganda, scoring 10 points, was it Mike? Yes, he scored 10 points in the win when Papa were 25-6 winners over their host, Renzori. Of course, no relation to Michael Onjala who plays for Kenya Sevens. It would appear that uh, some of the names might be quite similar in this part of the country. They're very similar because I also know Michael Onjala who once played rugby and still no relation. Anyway, back to the game. And uh, it now goes against Papa. Papa Ngovu, after having come to the UAP Kifaru side of the half for about 10 minutes, come off empty handed. And you know, you, you've got to feel for them. They've played very hard, and you'd have expected them to at least come off with a couple of points. But I guess that's what rugby is all about. Yeah. If you don't utilize all your chances, then um, I mean, you'll end up crying later on. You know, Hillary, rugby is all about that. It's all about taking your chances. And the further the game progresses, you just feel that UAP Papa would have to utilize their chances because you don't want to be in this game in the 77th minute. You're trailing by three points and you're ruining all these opportunities you missed. As I see a fan on the other side. <laughs> Was he dozing off or something? <laughs> of course, uh, there's, been, there's been a lot of fun and fair and carnival activity. The build up to the match and you probably um, just seen on your screen there's someone who's definitely um, suffering the effects of a good time out in Kakamega. Yes. Back to the game. Huh? <laughs> Papa Nguvu still on the onslaught. That's trying to utilize. Oh, and, and, that's, and that's what Alan Omuke is all about. As I was saying earlier on, Mike, you do not want an Alan Omuke. And Agassin Lugonzo still not getting any runners off him. And you've got to feel for Agassin Lugonzo's pattern of play. He, in my opinion, has a similar start pattern of play like Quade Cooper. Get a runner off him and you'll always be able to get something. Mm -hmm. But the runners just seem to be holding themselves back and ruining basically... Not utilizing the opportunities that may arise from there. Louis gives you in possession to Papa. Did very well to hold on to the ball and gain uh, seven years because it looked like he was given a malaria pass there. Yeah, that pass was that was absolutely no way bound. Yeah, he made the most out of it, just keeping it in. I think that's what any forward would do. Take it forward, keep possession, gain ground for the team. Meanwhile, Augustine Logonzo looks like he's going to get touch for Papa. With eight minutes of the first half remaining. And he does get touch just inside the Kifaru 22. It looks like a similar position to where um, Papa Nguvu started their onslaught about 10 minutes ago, where they had the line out and a series of scrum downs. Uh, they had one good line out and from then on a series of scrum downs. This time they still managed to keep on to the line out. Great catch by Louis Kissia. Lucas has been very outstanding uh, within the forward so far as this game has been progressing. It would appear that he may be the one who will be the telling difference. Now what can they do from this as they stay in possession? Referee Raymond Oruo put his hand up for um, some advantage play. Didn't seem to like something from the breakdown end. Papa Nguvu look like they have it quite well formed this time around. And it would look like the referee still is playing advantage for some reason. Perhaps uh, someone getting to the wrong side of the ball and holding the ball in. But we'll soon find out. Referee calling the ball back up. Wasn't too happy about the advantage that he was playing for Papa Nguvu there. Calling the ball back and it would appear that it would be a scrum down. 
yes, it looks like both teams are coming to the penalty set for the scrum down. No, I see Gay Rua's hand up. The penalty. Hold. Time out. Guys, discipline. Uh, he's in consultation now with his assistant referee on the other side. Where did you punch it? No, on Wimba. Of course, rugby is uh, one of the few sports where you actually get the referee consulting with the assistants to get a definite decision. Perhaps something that has uh, Captain Green. We talked about in soccer circles is to see how linesmen can go on through and pick a leap from the same line. We talked about it. We said the game needs to be clean. Punching. He punched before it. Be a card out in there. The next one, we're not going to tell you. No, no. That one, we're not discussing. I'll come and talk to you. You pass penalty here. Where? Wapi? Upper. Time on. Very, very uh, unfortunate, if not totally unwarranted. I mean, when your team is trailing by three points to zero and you've been rampaging in the uh, the contact face situations, it's it's totally uncalled for to do something like that with only 10 meters to the try line. Only 10 meters to the try line, five minutes to half time. It's uh, probably something to do with a lack of awareness, a lack of discipline. Losing your head at this particular point in time when composure is what you really need heading into the interval. I'm certain uh, uh, <laughs> Papa Ngubu coach, um, Kati Solago will, uh, will not be too keen, if not too amused with career. And you, Piki Faru, retain the ball. That's Dan Otieno. Dan Otieno getting very hard yards. Eh? You can see that he's, um, he's being wrapped up. Nick Ongeri on one side. Also being wrapped up by Steve Wakai on the other side. And uh, Papa Nguvu managed to pick the ball out. That's Devo Enaswani. Goes down and you can see there's a flurry of shots in there. Referee not too happy with the ball being held on down. Decides to give the penalty on to Papa Nguvu who have a better chance of punting down the ball we'll deep into the opponent's uh, territory and try and get something out of this. They surely need to get something out of this heading into halftime. Yeah. Now the great kick there by Augustin Lugonzo. I mean, Augustin Lugonzo has done all the right things, but you, you get a feeling that perhaps he needs to go and get some fellows who will be fleet-footed to run off his shoulders. And um, like I said earlier, perhaps we need to get some of this rampaging Papanguvu back rows oh, yeah. and lock forwards running off the shoulder because I am almost certain that that's where the strengths would actually be able to lie and allow them to come into this game and give UAP Kifar, who looked like runaway victors, a run for their money. Well, there's that and there's also the fact uh, you could also attribute it to um, probably the, the jaded feeling that you talked about early on. I think... Um, Papa have not got into this game at all. The, the player who has stood out for, for them thus far, for all of 37 minutes, has been Augustine Lugonzo. There have been flashes of brilliance from Louis Kisia and uh, Alan Umuka. But uh, other than that, you just feel the team is at sixes and sevens, struggling to, to gain any territory, to gain any advantage. In your picture there, Salato Muturi, who comes in and throws a bullet of a line out. And there's a lot of dynamism showing in now for Papa Nguvu. Um, Salato Muturi looked like he came in with a much needed magical wand. And it's quite interesting, Papa have made two substitutions in this first half. Uh, Michael Lanjala on for Edgar Bere and Salaton Muturi on for... We we'll find that out. I think it's because Karia got sent off. They, they had to get someone off for the 10 minutes uh -huh. to ensure that you can still retain all the... The front rows. Yeah, the, the specialist positions, as they call it in rugby. <laughs> I repeat, specialist <laughs> position. <laughs> We call them the front rows from where we sit. Very intelligent lads, huh? Very, very intelligent. It's a special position. Uh, of course, recognized by the IRB. And one of the few, po actually, the only position that can cause an entire rugby match to be stopped. Never knew that, despite all my years of playing the game. Anyway, there's another break here. Come, but you could not in a rush pass, yeah, hi, trying to just ensure that they can grind down uh -huh. the remaining few minutes and go but into the halftime break with the three point adv uh, advantage. Yeah. Great shot there by Papangubu, winning it against the head and the turn of a ball. And um, interesting, Papa and Google actually and play one man less, but they look like they're just um, on the yeah, same set, even uh, number of players. They've actually drawn in a uh, back who's not really a specialized uh, forward player on the drive, and they look like they're still back to the full complement of eight forwards. Well, you 
know when you're playing sometimes. Let's break down half time. Let's break down Just at the top of the picture, no. the uh, traditional Isukuti dance. Fine. You can make, of course, the whole movie Isukuti. You can Set. see the fun fan carnival no. happening just at the corner. No. The, of course, the players no. uh, do not no. actually have the advantage of trying to dance right now. They have to complain. And you and Vicky Faru managed almost managed Mumo 3. The referee calls for a knock on there. And the final, the, that's, that, that's the final piece okay, of action. Okay, Roba, Roba, just time. Yep. Well, it's fine. Well, it's fine. Well, it's fine. Well, it's fine. Can say that. Arun Lubisia's uh, drop goal separating the two sides. UAP Kifaru leading uh, Guvu Papa 3 0. I wonder I'm ready. what the coaches are going to say to their teams at halftime. Of course, uh, having to do 1,200 kilometers of uh, journey last week looked like a second toll on Papa and Guvu. Having to do an extra 400 kilometers may have actually put pay to the energy reserves. At the interval, Papa and Guvu trail against UAP Kifaru 3 points to 0. We'll go for the halftime break and um, we'll be back after the halftime interval with my able colleague Mike Wambo from Kakamega. Tasca, the Kenya Rugby Union. No, guys, it's not for us, so good. But you're playing with the wrong half. Okay, for now, those scrums, Hoodie, Okota, Rocky, get there with him. Uh, Dan, get there with him. That's the first hit. Second hit, give it out to the back. Nine out. Nine out. Gonna spend our five man in our forties. Rudisha, let's not put ourselves under any unnecessary pressure. All eight. We secure it in our half. Five months, we do it in the half. No high risk stuff with half. Not in our half. Front, pro box. You are letting no step into you. Huh? We absorb Kwanzaa and they are heavier. You can't absorb a heavier guy. Welcome back to the Bamburi Rugby Super Series 2015 here at the Kakawega High School grounds. With me here is Benjamin Aimba. He doesn't need any introduction. Former Kenya 15s player, former Kenya 15s captain, former Kenya 15s coach, and exactly the same lineup for the sevens team. Benjamin, welcome. Yes. Um, your thoughts on this match? Very interesting match. Um, of course, uh, Papa had a lot of uh, uh, possession. Unfortunately, whenever they faltered when they in the 22, they couldn't convert any, any points. I think earlier on, when they had a chance to take the ball to the corner and try for a try, they were going for posts, which they have missed uh, quite a lot. They don't have a very good kicker, and uh, what, what Kifaru has done is uh, defended very, very well. They're getting a lot of possession, and unfortunately for Papa, then they can't, they can't recover. So Kifaru are getting into the, in, into the, in, into the Papa's half and, and looking more dangerous. And uh, I think we've seen a very emotional uh, Papa coach who's uh, taken out his, his best come up uh, for the, for the, in the first half. That was very unfortunate. He got very emotional, so we hope that will not uh, affect his team too much. And again, uh, it is the less experienced Kama who's taken over. And you can see that the scrum is not now well, well marshaled. Um, Kifaru have, have also a very, a very light scrum compared to the Papa one. So they should be taking advantage in that. The last, uh, unfortunately, they, last, they lost the last uh, scrum. And there, there were fewer men in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Papa, Papa group. So uh, it will be very interesting to see how they come in the second half. I've seen... The coaching, coaches really, really flaring up between between each other, and uh, it's been a bit crazy how they've they've been able to 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 maintain the the players' uh, heads. Okay, thank you very much, Ben. We'll talk at the end. All right, no problem. Thanks. I'm going to check her career. The former captain. Captain. captain, the captain, the captain, the player, captain, coach, all of them. Sure, for your Yes. <laughs> He's the one who brought the Kenya 7s to the level of where it is now. Yes? Are you interviewing the, the new coach? No, no, we are doing the, the interview. Oh,
Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Second half of the match, set to start. Papangu making one change there from the top of Ian Inimuli leaving the pitch. And uh, in comes Brian Sagara. Of course, uh, Ian Inimuli has been rather very silent in the first half. And comes as no surprise that he's been um, brought off the field of play by Coach Curtis Olago. Perhaps a tactical change, Brian Sagara being brought in for a different dimension onto the game. Uh, maybe to support uh, Luis Kisia, who's been um, very active on offense. Maybe realizing that there could be a bit of gaps back on defense and just getting Sagara to perhaps come in and uh, consolidate on that. That's an interesting replacement for you, for Nguvu Papa, considering the fact that Brian Sagara mostly plays as a lock both for his club uh, KCB and uh, previous editions of the Super Series where he has played for Papa in that position. But anyway, the match is on. George Mutuku, Aaron Lubisia booting uh, Kifaru out of danger. This is Peter Kepa now in possession on the counter, blue, blue. kicking it back get into back, 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 back. the hands of uh, George Mutuku. It's now <laughs> a bit of football. This is the football part of rugby, Hillary. Ken Mosetti also into the field of play. Gets a ball out back. Try to spread the ball out to Alan Omuka. They need to get Alan Omuka into one of those one-on-one -one -on -one situations where he's extremely devastating. Shrugs off one player, shrugs off a second, gains another hard 15 meters. Alan Omuka is the kind of player you'd always want to put into one-on-one -on -one situations that uh, will be able to yield you some clear dividends. Yeah, and you can see what he's done. He's set up an attack for Papa as they're moving forward. This is Ken Mosetti in possession. <laughs> Referee yeah, calls. Right. Referee not too happy with the fact that the players had uh, had actually respected the 10 meter line and uh, calls for a penalty. Ken Mosetti, of course, coming on in playing at the up. outside center. Post. Very, very exciting player. Uh, former player for the Kenya National Service team. Also, one player who's been unfortunately been plagued with uh, lots of injuries in the past. Yeah, but he's of late rehabilitated himself and uh, seems to be on the path to full fitness. I mean, his performances of late have been notable. Most uh, recent, remember the great Rift Turner side. Meanwhile, a penalty attempt. This is Peter Keffer, the Papa fullback, attempting his second kick for goal. Not too certain who between Peter Kefa and Agassi Lugonzo is a better kicker because I've also seen Agassi Lugonzo taking a couple of place kicks and um, he's, uh, he's quite decent, I think. Yeah, he's no slouch. And uh, that one goes wide again from uh, Peter Kefa. The scores are remaining 3-0. Uh, Kifaru in the lead, two minutes into the second half. Of course, Peter Kefa, that's his second penalty kick of the game and um, the results are just the same. Maybe the coach needs to look at uh, uh, nominating someone to take the kicks. Peter Kefa looks like he has the strength on the punt, but his direction has been uh, wanting. Oh, great kickoff and absolutely great drive in there by Collins Wanjala. 
because the referee seems to play advantage on to UAP Kifaru. Looks like it was a knock on on the ball when he went down. Great run there by Collins Wanjala. Yes, and that is the call I from a referee it. Ray Oruo. Collins Wanjala has had a very quiet first half. We didn't see him in action, Hillary, in the first half, did we? Yeah, I think that's his first touch on the ball. Perhaps uh, having Ken Mosetti in has uh, given him a chance or rather some belief that he can run the ball on in. And you've actually seen a run by Peter Kefa, a run by Wanjala, a run by Alan Omuk, and it looks like the instructions Coach. are for the back three to try and take the ball on in, be able to get it through where the fours will clear up and get the centers to go and get a kit, uh, uh, some, some, some little more hard yardage. Meanwhile, it's a Guvu. Beg your pardon, that was a UAP Kifaru put in, but the scrum collapses there. Do you think they're going to set it again, Hillary? Uh, it's, it's interesting that um, we're actually seeing collapse scrums at this day and age. There will be, of course, uh, set up new guidelines towards the later part of last, last year that stated that you needed to hold, the, the front row rather, up, up. I beg your pardon, three, needed three. to hold each other just Once before they engage. Straight. Because they did, uh, they did, they did a study and realized that 90% of injuries from front rows came from collapse scrum because of the take. And you would have, you, have actually expected that the Fine. touch of the shot right there before they engage would be able to put a more stable scrum. This one is more stable. And the referee calling it in Faru's advantage. Yes, it would appear that someone just sit on back and uh, did not put in pressure. Maybe the reason why the first scrum down just disintegrated. Yeah, and a quickly taken penalty there. And now. They lost it. They lost it. Papa not giving ten, and now this is Arun Lubisia. That's an unfortunate rush of blood to the head. Lost the ball when they did not need to lose it. Peter Kefa almost gets a ball knock on there. You've got to feel it for him. He, he looked like he had it, then at the last minute, just got the ball dropped off. And knocking the ball in the worst place he'd want to do it, deep in his own half. And again, just as the first half began, it's advantage early in this game. Early in the second half of this game. If you're just joining us, the scores are UFC Coach. Paru 3, Google Papa 0. The sole scores coming from an Arun Lubisia drop goal early in the first half. Coach. The second drop goal registered in the 2014 Bundy Rugby Super Series. George Motuku, Set. the top side of your screen there, getting the ball to, to go into the scrum. <laughs> Referee says that the foot was out Top before the ball goes in. Calls for a penalty. George Motuku really wanted to get the ball rolling. Huh? Was to rush, but the referee just asked him to, to stay back and hold, hold put. I think he's just doing what any other player would do in this part of the pitch. You're close to your opponent's try line. You want to gain as much ground as possible, but the referee thought otherwise. When the ball is not yours, and it's still advantage, uh, <laughs> Kifaru. Hillary, so far things have not worked for, for Papa. Nothing at all has worked for them this entire game. They, 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 they seem to have the full uh, set of players now with Peter Carrier coming on in. Of course, they did suffer towards the end of the first half when Carrier got that very unnecessary yellow card. And uh, they biffed in their, their team in the second half. But um, just when you thought that they were trying to get something moving on through, one or two mistakes, get them back deep in the territory, and it looks like Kifaru might actually be picking up on all the scraps, and we might actually see Papa Nguru being uh, shocked here, perhaps due to their complacency. Complacency being disjointed, get off, get off, all those words, but yes, we might actually see that. Wanjala trying to get territory, but only kicking the ball into the hands of uh, Kevin Ochami. Great up and under kick there by Kevin. One of those, uh, you know, little nippy kicks that just allows him to come back and place pressure. And you can see right from the tackle in there, Nikon Gary did not release the ball and you have Piki Faru have retained the possession. And I mean, Papa and Guru need to go on through and understand where their strengths are because it would appear that they're doing the same things they're doing in the first half. And um, I'm sorry to use this analogy. Insanity would be doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. Maybe that's what we are seeing from Papa and Guru. Maybe. And uh, it looks like uh, Kifaru are going for points. Kifaru, of course, um, on paper, not really a highly fancy side, but have been very impressive in the first of this game. Just doing what is actually called the basics. Putting in their tackles, ensuring that they keep uh, a very disciplined defense line, ensuring there's nothing fancy. Got a drop kick, and now they get a chance to try and add another three points. 
Onto the ones already have on board. This is Brian Kivasia. He's been reliable with the boot for his club side, Mwamba, in the Kenya Cup. And he's again going to try and extend the lead for Kifaru here. He's all concentration at this point. In the run-up, there he goes. And... Uh, the kick was shot and straight into the hands of Alan Omuka, who is off. Alan Omuka, and that is exactly what we're talking about. Placing Alan Omuka into a one-on-one -on -one situation where he gets to show his devastating speed and brutal strength. Just running the ball 40 meters up, referee calls for a penalty. Quickly taken by Papanguvu, but they just don't seem to know exactly what to do after taking it quick. They seem to have numbers only in one part of the pitch and... Roll off! It would be interesting to see what would happen if they do lose the ball to UAP Kifaru because UAP Kifaru have a better formation and might be able to make them pay if they could get the, the ball. Collins Wanjala, oh, smashed right in the, <laughs> right after taking about two, three yards. And penalty Kifaru. This is the second up, time up, he's up, been up, caught up, in that. Up, really he didn't leave the ball when he went down. Captain. It happened the first time he caught the ball and again. He was caught out. Oh. Of course, there's no one to help him out, but again. Right from the time he got the ball, of course, he had absolutely no one on the right side of the pitch. All the Papua Nguvu players had been clustered to the left side um, after the quickly taken penalty. And, um, well, Collins Wanjala did what he thought was going to be best because had that ball been uh, turned over, then that would have been a clear try-scoring opportunity by Yopi Kifaru. Perhaps a case of just ensuring that um, he can slow down the ball and ensure that no further damage is done onto his team's scoreline. Yes, Hillary. Um, oh, the call actually went to <laughs> Papa. Uh, Augustine Ligonzo trying to get touched but failing. I did actually um, have a chat with someone earlier on before the game started. And I'd, uh, I'd actually told them that the rains would start at about 3 o'clock. <laughs> so we had a bet. I think I need to be picking up on my bragging rights from that party in a little while. So it's actually 3 o'clock and it looked like the clouds are opening down in Western Kenya. Um, you can see the Thank fans trying to get any available tent to move on in. Hold, hold, still hold, advantage hold, hold, you, Epikifaru. Uh, ten minutes played in the second half. Scores still haven't changed since the fourth minute. You, Epikifaru, still lead three points to zero. They return their scrum. Aaron Lubisia gets the ball. He's got runners out in there. They need to keep it. Aaron Lubisia gets it back again. Ball just gets smashed all the way down. The and scrum down Green. again for Papa Nguvu. They've had many of those. In fact, now the referee... What's it? There looks to be a player down. Hold, 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 hold. Let me check, check. Fortunately, it is um, Israel Soy. And I don't think he's injured. It's more of his ego. He's the one who just smashed that ball on the knock on a few minutes ago. Perhaps more of a case of the fellow just Green ball. having a hard ego than really getting injured. Well, let's hope for the best because um, it seems like the medic is going to attend to him. As the skies, Hillary uh, opened up. Of course, with the rains coming on through, we'll, we'll have an expectation that the teams will definitely go around and employ other tactics, perhaps trying to play the ball tight. And, uh, well, that, that's definitely not uh, very positive for rugby because it only slows the game down. And for the pervers, if not the rugby purists who believe in free-flowing rugby, um, playing in the rain is definitely one of those killjoys. Sure is, but today there's a job to be done by both okay. sides. Hold, 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 hold. They'll take the game whichever way it comes. Let's go, right. let's go. Fast. Let's remove him, remove him. Let's. Israel Soy really, really, really looks like he's up, uh, up. Let's, let's get him off in a very, very troublesome spot. I beg your pardon, that's actually um, Brian Kivasia who was down. And this, this, this will definitely be a blow to um, UAP Kifaru. They're, they're losing one of their goal kickers and in a tight game like this you you definitely do not want to lose someone as important and integral to the team like that. So Brian Kivasia walks out and in his place he's been replaced by uh, Daniel Mubea. Daniel Mubea of course plays for the Inversion Nerve Mean Machine. Rugby team, a very experienced player, moves into the fullback position in place of Brian Kivasia. Coach! Bind! Set! As Michael Wanjala puts in the ball for Papanguvu, Dave Wainaswani playing in number 22 for... That's Ken Mosetti, great strength there, man. <laughs> for a man who's only about 5 foot 7. Side. I mean, the strength uh, on his upper body is quite impressive. The little, the little engine that could. And he's actually 
doing a lot for Papa. Had a couple of guys earlier on before the game started there um, throwing bunt at him, calling him Popeye. <laughs> Apparently his arms are much bigger than the rest of his body. And clearly put them to good use right in there. Shrugging off two players, you know, some, you know, great, great, great level of uh, upper body strength being shown in there. Yeah, especially in these uh, slippery conditions that we are now facing at the Kakamega High School grounds as the rain continues to pour down steadily. It will take a lot, it will take a lot of upper body strength, it will take a lot of good hands to navigate the rest of this match. Of course, after this match, we have the second match of match day two. Ndobu playing against Victoria Protectors coming in all day from Uganda. And uh, I mean, it looks like it's a rugby field day. Look, look, look. We also have the Kenya Sevens team playing in Scotland. Okay, let's count numbers. The Glasgow Thank Sevens, you. Uh, of, of, uh, Glasgow Sevens leg of the RB series. Kenya unfortunately going down earlier on in the day, 24-19 to Wales. And in a few minutes, uh, playing against Fiji. They'll actually be playing against Fiji at 3.36 p.m. East African time. And we'll keep you updated as this match goes on. Definitely did. Papangubu, looking like they want to go on through and just ensure they can get something in earlier on and build up on that. On the rampage, playing their sixth face with the ball. Oh, looks like a high tackle right there. Referee does not seem to play out any advantage. Papangubu retained the ball opting to do the pick and drives you see the strength on the pick and drive shows that they actually have the ability to be able to go on through and break defenses but they just haven't looked at the variation of playing off the shoulders of the flyer or the flyer maybe just just, just being a bit creative remember Aaron Lubis has scored out of nothing from a drop goal absolutely and yes there's there's more forward play from Papa Francis Akatu there the top of your picture getting the ball on in getting the ball out managing to get the ball on out Mike Wanjala getting out to look uh, Logosili Gonzo. Big ball out. This is Colin Gonzo. 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 Oh. Agonizingly Please. close from the try line there. Colin Wanjala. This time managed to keep the ball. Still advantage Papa at this point. Logosili Gonzo moving on back. Looks like he's perhaps trying to get a couple of uh, runners off his shoulder. The fours advantage are left for the pick and drive. Advantage they must over. be perhaps at most maybe a meter, a meter and a half from the try line because it's very, very close there. As the referee says, advantage over. So Use. they have to make something out of this. I can see Peter Carrier now. Louis Kissier standing over the ball. Nobody actually wants to. Go. I think. I think that. Oh, <laughs> we saw a similar thing in the first half. A knock on. I mean, Papa Nguvu, Surely they are their own worst enemies. You have Piki Faru have just maintained their form, but. All the mistakes that have been telling in this game have come all the way from Papa and Google. Very simple mistakes in very important areas, uh, Hillary. Come, 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 come. It is, it is, it is actually very come, frustrating come, 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 come. for um, a tactician sitting on the bench. It's easier to coach tactics, but it's harder to coach how to eliminate mistakes. That's entirely up to the player. It is entirely up to the player because you come into a game knowing the stakes and you know what you have to coach. do. They've even lost position. It's going to be uh, Kiparu put in. Set. The wily George Mutuku going to work out something. That's Dan Otieno who picks up from there. That's very well to get about 10 hard yards. Um, he knew very well that they'd be driven against the head. So very, very wise play there for, from Dan Otieno. Elected to pick up the ball as opposed to just keeping it in. And Papa and Google from um, basically sniffing a try get pushed back another 40 meters and they have to pick up again from scratch. And that can be really frustrating, Hillary. I'm sure you experienced that from your playing days. Very, very, very annoying to be very honest. Huh? However, it is such moments in a game that will be able to show the character of a team and whether you can come around and uh, you know pick yourself up from that. More often than not, the expectation would be that the team would probably just end up shrugging and putting their heads down and allow themselves to be totally pummeled by the position. But on the odd occasion that players have picked themselves up, they've been able to come around and win against the odd memorably. I do recall uh, the Super Series in 2005, then uh, playing for Cheetahs, Cheetahs versus um, the, Lions. the Lions final. We were 22 points to 7 down at halftime and eventually won the final 29 points to 22. I remember that game we played in that final. And, uh, <laughs> I was on the losing side. It was absolutely <laughs> graceful. Huh? So I mean, who, it, 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 I wouldn't really be able to go around and uh, run pop and goof off. And you know, just like I said, look at look at Kenmo's setting, man. Came off from absolutely yes. nowhere like a blazing bullet. Really in about four players and gets a penalty there. Michael Mike Wanjala can let him do a quick take. 
tackle less than two meters and the referee does not call for any advantage. How about that? As the rain continues to pound the Kakamega High School grounds, looks like a slip ball there. What's it gonna be? This, this, this perhaps, with the rain family, now this perhaps might be Kifaru's game to lose. Because the added pressure that has been placed on Mipapa as the time closes off does not perhaps look positive on their end. And with the rain coming on through and um, their very suspect handling Coach. getting worse by the minute, you've got to perhaps think to yourself that UAP Kifaru may have a chance in this one. They may. Set. And remember, Hillary, we talked about that crucial five minutes at the close of the, towards the close of the first half when uh, Papa were unable to utilize the opportunities. I'm not writing their eulogy just yet, but uh, as the game proceeds, you feel that the, there's a level of desperation that's going to keep on in, inside of them. I mean, if Papa Ngubu just reduce the error rate by 50%, there'd be very many points ahead in this particular game. But it's been themselves just, you know, being their own worst enemies. It's really not been, I mean, of course, all respect to UAP Kifaru. They've been very disciplined. They've been very, very methodical in their execution. But Papa Ngubu have actually been their own worst enemies. And what's going to happen is, with this result, it'll probably be an issue of mathematics heading into match day three where we could have a very likely scenario of three teams on the same number of wins. But anyway, it's early days yet. We are approaching 17 minutes of the first half. And it's going to be uh, Kifaru Putin, George Mutuku again holding the ball. He's looked very confident and composed with the ball <laughs> when he's in possession as well. Of course, his experience coming in to count for the UFP Kifaru team. Yopikifaru holding on to the ball, it's money to shuffle left, right and center, not perhaps too certain about what they need to do with it. Of course they lost uh, Kibasia who's been kicking them off from deep in the territory and that is what I was talking about. When you lose one of your reliable uh, place kickers and uh, territorial kickers, you have a tendency of such happening. I mean they shouldn't have actually kept on passing the ball. Someone should have been able to get the boot and uh, just clear the pressure from there. So penalty comes on through. Uh, Papangu taking their time, perhaps electing to go for post. You can see Agassin Lugonzo coming on in there. Now, will it be Peter Kefo or Agassin Lugonzo taking this? It looks like Michael Wanjala has placed himself there. It's interesting that Peter Kefo was being given the place because last week uh, Mike Wanjala was the kicker for yeah. Papangugu, yes. scoring um, 10 points. Yeah, he scored 10 points, two penalties and two conversions. Uh, Papa defeated Wenzori 25 6 in Kampala. Well, there's some decisions that um, are left best unquestioned and uh, as they change let's see if this uh, change in uh, kicker will change uh, papa's luck definitely indeed so michael Angela, 10 points already from match day one uh, of the bamboo rugby super series will he be able to add another three onto his turning it looks like a relatively straightforward position let's look at his run up to the kick as the rain continues to pound the Kakamega High School ground. And it's good. And Hillary. <laughs> I mean, Michael Wanjala scoring for Nguvu Papa. That is Michael Wanjala for Nguvu Papa. Scoring for Nguvu Papa, leveling the scores at 3 all. And Hillary, should they have elected to use him as the kicker from earlier on? So that begs the question. Michael Wanjala was substituted into the game with 10 minutes to play of the first half. We've had very many penalty uh, scoring opportunities and Papa just elect to utilize and remember they have a great kicker 30 minutes later on. Food for thought, huh? Definitely. And they need to digest on this food for thought now. They need to also keep their composure. Uh, probably this will give them a lift and give them the impetus to surge forward. Akasin Lugonzo on the screen there just chasing down the kick. UAP Kifaru not keen on making the same mistake that Golden Pelic this time electing to punt the ball for a throw in right at the midway mark of the pitch. Hillary, the yeah. teams are now all square. What's your take on this? I think uh, we need to get the rain off to give this a, very, a fairly decent chance. With the rain going on through, we probably like to see a tyranny of errors, scrappy play, but should it probably stop in the next 10 minutes, I have a feeling that we might probably be bracing ourselves for some exciting free-flowing rugby for the remainder of the game. But we need the rain to stop, otherwise the errors will just keep on mounting up. 
and it may not necessarily give any advantage to the most skilled team. And suddenly things seem to be going Papa's way. Before that, Agassin Logonzo had embarked on one of his darting runs, just infringed as he went down. Um, it is all advantage uh, Papa at this point in time. Agassin Logonzo looking to get touch, gain territory as well for Papa. Um, has just not been able to be able to finish a season without levels of injury and you do get a feeling that if he should actually go on through and just get more game time he might probably be uh, one of the um, standard players within the Kenyan national team setter for years to come yes because um, at this point in age he's still only 22 years old he's been considered for the Kenya sevens and already also been considered for the Kenya 15s but as you said the injuries just that stroke of bad luck has not really worked against has not really worked for him and he needs the luck and he also needs to stay fit to be in the bigger picture of course much better from when he first started playing rugby so perhaps a case of trying to understand how to condition himself better to to absorb a lot more of the com uh, contact and impact that he tends to get as a player it's always a targeted position flyers always perceived to be the weakling within a rugby team. And Papanguvu managed to get them all moving on through. They, they have done well so far, managing to drive close to about 10 meters. They're not too far off from the try line. They just need to be confident about the fact that they know they're doing something and they're doing it very well. And they might actually be able to score the try should they just... It looks good so far. You have Piki Faru coming in from the sides, not too certain why the referee is not calling out for it. Looks like there's been a bit of infringement. That you still UAP Papa keep the ball in. Looks like somewhere in there, someone may have handed it on up. Ball goes down. Quickly out. Agassi Milgonzo gets onto the scrummer position. Quickly gets the ball. Again. Ken Mosetti drawing in four players. Still retains the ball possession. Papa and Google look like in the upside now. Michael Angela gets the ball. This time pumping it out to Nick Ongeri. Ongeri pumps the ball out. Luckily maintained by Bush Mwale. Ball comes back out again. Kicked out by someone. I don't think the referee saw that. I don't think that ball was kicked by Papangubu. It looked like someone took advantage of the situation and just did a cheeky thing in there. And you have Kifaru. <laughs> get, the, uh, get out of jail card. And, and you can see them hugging each other. They know what they did. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do to survive. I think the hug there was more to the fact that they did something cheeky and they were not caught by the referee because that would have actually been a card. I think the referee being told there by the lines that there was a bit of naughtiness in there. Calling off the match. Captain! Because there was Captain. something illegal in there. I think the third judge has um, spoken to the referee and told the referee that there was a bit of mystery because the ball just popped on out as Mike Wanjalo was going on through to pick the ball out and pass. Right? Yeah? Off the ball stuff. Let us play. Yeah? Uh, both sides, actually. So it's not one side, both sides. There's retaliation, there's punching. Let us stop it and play. Right? We play being well. Let's talk to your guys. Right? So, yeah. 30 seconds, please talk to your guys. Almost hoping and praying that the referee will not mention it. But there was, um, for lack of, there was actually some cheating there. <laughs> well, play continues here at the Kakamega High School ground. The teams are huddled for a bit. I think the referee opting to give um, UAP Kifaru the benefit of doubt in there. Perhaps wasn't in a good position to see what occurred in there. And uh, unfortunately also not having the benefit of a TV replay to allow him to make a decision on that. So it'll be a liner for UAP Kifaru. Ezra Langat, at the bottom of your uh, picture, throwing the ball in. George Mutuku manages to get the ball. Haron Lubisia, the man who's been the go-to man for UAP, Kifaru, kicks the ball out, manages to get a knock-on advantage onto his play there. Referee will call for a scrum down because there was a second knock-on done by UAP, Kifaru. They have the territory and, of course, it's, it's always, it's always uh, easier on your mind to play within the centre part of the pitch as opposed to playing within your own try and box area. So... Your Piki Faro look like they're much more comfortable on the center part because they look like they've always been in perennial um, perennial risk of conceding points uh, within their territory. And in comes Kevin Waidaka. Double substitution being done there by Papangu. 
Kevin Waidaka comes in for Alpha City Messi. And Peter Carrier comes on out, and Salato Muturi now makes a permanent entry into this uh, lineup. Um, is that is that something that will be able to give them some level of upsurge? Uh, only time will tell. We have about 17 minutes of the game still on the clock to play, so we'll definitely be able to find us sooner rather than later. Fresh legs in the specialist position, as uh, Hillary likes to put it. Let's see what that will do for Papa. Cheeky kick through by Harold Lubis, and it manages to get onto the hands. Good tackle right in there by Papa Ngu. That was a very nice cheeky kick by Harun Lubisia there. George Mutuku still has a ball. UAP Papa only after oh, and there is absolutely a card coming out there. There is definitely That's Kevin Waidaka. There is a card he coming showed out in no there. interest whatsoever. None whatsoever. He should have even just kept his hands behind his back or something. Waidaka walking away from the referee. The referee knows exactly who the culprit is. Kevin Wadaka, that was a rush of blood to the head. Just walked in less than a minute ago. <laughs> and it waits to see what card is coming out because there's a card. Whether it's red or a yellow, but there's a card coming out. And I think Wadaka knew because he walked away. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, 10 minutes in the cooler for Kevin Wadaka. No interest whatsoever. He had been beaten. Um, he probably couldn't stretch, so he just left his arm. Um, Clothesline, his opponent. Very dreadful and unsportsmanly yeah. there by yeah. Kevin yeah. Waidaka. Absolutely unnecessary. Totally. I mean, his yeah. team has yeah. fought back. They have actually yeah. gotten yeah. into some yeah. sense of yeah. rhythm. They are actually stringing plays together. They are actually <laughs> able to put points on the board. And then this happens. Could this be a turning point in this game, Hillary? I, I believe this will be the turning point because with 17 minutes left to play and 10 minutes off playing for team men, that basically means that you've literally thrown your advantage or any semblance of ability to go on through and compete effectively. Kevin Waidaka, absolutely dreadful. <laughs> Very dreadful. It looks like Mutuku has now taken over the goalkeeping responsibilities for Kiparu. He played for Kenya at the 2009 Junior World Rugby Trophy in Nairobi. He's making his lead up there. Mutuku kicks it hard, but does not go in by his players. Had the awareness, keep on running. And a second dreadful challenge in there. What is happening to Papa Nguvu? They just seem to not have it together today. There's no other way I could explain that. Totally no interest again in playing the ball. I mean, you're up in the air with your opponent. I'll penalize you. Uh, I'll not send you off pull out of because that, you jumped out. But uh, All right. completing it and it knowing that. that you're in a dangerous uh, position. It's just unacceptable, here. Of course, UAP uh, Kifaru already had the tea in their hands. John Mutuku still held on to the tea from the previous kick, ran up to the position. And um, Papa and Gugu uh, look like they're basically imploding and degenerating from one level of uh, disaster to the next. Look like they've hit the self-destruct button right there. And what a time to do so. We look like, yeah, less than 15 minutes of play remaining. We're doing uh, 25, going on 26 minutes. And the kick is successful by George Mutuku. UAP Kifaru 6, Nguvu Papa 3. I mean, a litany of errors by, by Nguvu Papa. You know? Kevin Waidaka should be feeling very guilty from wherever he is because he's been the, I mean, to be honest, he's been the start of all this <laughs> madness that we've seen in the last six minutes. Well, the onus is now on Nguvu Papa to spark a response. They'll need to keep their composure. But remember, they're down to 14 men for slightly less than 10 minutes. Will it work to their advantage or will it not? Anyway, play resumes. No one looked interested in holding the ball there. Look like everyone was jumping by. No on advantage for Papa Nguvu there. UAP Kifaru looking a little bit more relaxed on their faces. Of course, they're playing with a man extra in the forwards. So, um, Papa Nguvu on the other hand. I mean, if you just look at the body language, you look at the faces on the right and on the left. You know, you can see consternation. 
uh, on one set of players' faces, and on the other side, you see a lot of confidence. And they decide to play. And uh, they, they sacrifice Louis Kissier. Well, specialist positions, uh, again, requiring a, a specialist to come in and take it out, out of the back row for the front row. So Louis Kissier has been doing the pick out from the line out. He's been one of the most effective players on offense, and he's been very evident on the fetch positions after tackles are made, but the coach elects to bring him out. Very questionable uh, choice on who to bring out there. Come this side, come this side, come this side. Oh, no, no, no. Don't point, don't point, don't point. Referee will get a reset. No, 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 no. Mike Wanjala still with the ball there. Ray just, uh, the referee Raymond Duro just yeah, trying to ensure that the players yeah, are very stable where they're taking the scrum. Of course, safety is very, very paramount in the game of rugby. And on wet conditions like we're currently experiencing in Kakamega, you'd expect the referee to try and manage a contact position quite well um, to ensure that we do not have any um, spinal, in spinal or neck injuries occurring uh, within the scrum uh, situations. Coach, appearance, bind, set. Mike Wanjala, oh, sliding, almost, almost, almost catastrophic right in there. That's what I was actually talking about, Mike, early. No uh, no when it rains, it's, no it's always a tendency for players to slip in the front row position, and uh, safety has to become quite paramount in such situations. Still, Papangu will retain the ball. They take, the, they take the ball back in uh, into uh, a mole. Being a swanny, uh, he spins the swanny ball. knocks the person but lets the ball go. Mm -hmm. Too much energy being expended perhaps in knocking the man as opposed to retaining the ball. And again, another lost opportunity. And this is Alvin uh, Otero. She was alive in the first half. Then it will be quite difficult. He's losing possession. Of course, the, the wet ground not doing him lots of good. He always looked like he was just struggling to pump his legs into the mud and each and every step was perhaps just reducing its tenacity as he kept on moving on. But you've got to admire his tenacity. He's also another old boy of Kakamega High School. Finished Kakamega High School, played for Western Bulls and made the move recently to Homeboys RFC in Nairobi. Anyway... 30 minutes of the second half gone. Papanguvu managed to retain the ball. It's right at the back. He, from the top of the street, you can see Duena Suwani. Agassi Lugonzo elects to go and in. Decides to get the players to take yet another pick. Mike Wanjala now free. Gets the ball to Agustin Lugonzo. Kicks off his right. Referee seems to, seems to penalize Papanguvu for... An infringement of the base. You, come out. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, one of the Papanguvu players blocked uh, a surging UAP Kifaru defender and the referee has called for a penalty to Kifaru for that. Oh, Papanguvu, my goodness. And the script continues to go against them. And UAP Kifaru looked like they'll be going Pillar. once again. Blocking. It's going to be that man once again. George Mutuku, who for me, at this point in time, has played exceptionally well for Kifaru. Would be a candidate for man of the match. We still have nine minutes to play. But overall, his uh, contribution over the previous 70 minutes has been immense. It's been outstanding. His decision making, and of course his points as well. George Mutuku taking his time there to place a ball on the tee. And um, concluding all the rituals that any typical rugby kicker would do across the world three steps back two to the side a tilt on the body a glaze up into the sky elbow out kicks it look like he had it confidently does not have the distance nor does it have the direction and alan omuka does well to retain the ball just under the woodworks Papa elected to run the ball. Augustine spreads the ball out wide. Great defense coming in by UAP Kifaru there. And they'll get the line out. Absolutely wonderful defense in there. And you, you know, you, you, you tend to wonder why Papa Nguvu just didn't kick the ball out after the first rack, after Alan Omuka, after Alan Omuka retrieved the ball. And fresh legs being thrown in by UAP Kifaru. They bring in 
number 18, Greg Dunman, and number 19, Collins O'Cheng. It's close to about eight minutes or thereabouts left on the clock before this game. The first game being played on leg two of the 2014 Bamboo Rugby Super Series ends and Papanguvu, who have been reduced to 14 men, find themselves gallantly defending over an upsurgent UA Kifaru side. Yeah, the scores are 6-3, uh, Kifaru leading Papa. There's still lots to play for with seven minutes of, oh, seven minutes of regular time left. Fine. Let's see what will happen from this scrum down. Papa Nguvu retain the ball. Uh, UAP Kifaru still are gallantly placing in the tackles, looking at perhaps counter-racking and getting the ball. They've quickly found on out. Agassin Lugonzo manages to get a punt into the air. There's a free-for-all ball bounces. Mubaya gets a ball, has got numbers out. He's looking for Alan. Alan gets a ball. That's Kevin Ochami now. Oh, Kevin Ochami, I beg your pardon. It looks like he's being tackled into touch, but no, he keeps the play alive. And uh, Kifaru retaining possession. And they're not losing their shape, Hillary, as they surge forward. They look to seal off this game. Seven minutes of play remaining. A Arun drop goal attempt uh, from Arun Lubisia. It's Jacob Oje. Jacob Oje being tracked. Being tracked all the way to the try box area. Jacob Oje has got some blistering pace. Manages do a stop start that uh, gets him about all the way to the 22 meter line. The ball goes to the UAP Kifaru side. Jacob Oje loses the ball in contact. And um, UAP Kifaru just have a never say die attitude. But you also feel that Jacob Oje there should have done the simple thing and just uh, kick the ball out for touch, reduce the pressure on, on his opponents and uh, on, yeah. on his teammates and uh, agree rebuild might, from there. Yeah, perhaps not too confident with this kicking and maybe something that he needs to work on because of course as, as one of the um, back three, um, uh, if, if you're playing the outside in, in, the, in, in the open side wing or the blind side wing or the full back, you need to be able to not only use your feet for running but also for kicking because there will be that chance that you'll be isolated and required to kick. So maybe an opportunity for Jacob Oje to improve on, on his game. He'll have to do a lot of that because I've also seen him play for his club side KCB and uh, he's, he's been guilty of the same offence on more than one occasion. It's something he'll have to work on if he's uh, to rise to the next level. Anyway, the scores remain 6-3. Kifaru in the lead here against Nguvu Papa. So you can see Louis Kisse getting back onto the pitch. It looks like Kevin Waidaka will also join the game for the remainder of it. He's back in on the top of the picture there. The burly character there with the with the arms uh, glazed akimbo. As uh, Papa also make another substitution, in comes Leon Lubanga, shirt number 19, in place of uh, number 3, Elpha Setemesi. Coach! Fine! Set! Of course, both teams back to the full complement of 15 players. Gassi Ligonzo kicks it center. Should be easily fielded by Mubea. Mubea gets a ball. Decides to return the favor. This time electing to kick for touch. And, and he, he gets darts touch. all the way out. Time continuing to tick away. Less than four minutes of time to play. Uh, Kifaru still leading 6-3 against uh, Nguvu Papa. The action coming live from oh, no, the Kakamega no, 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 High School, no, 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 no. being shown on Zuku Sports Channel 301 in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and also on Setanta Sports for the rest of the world. Great throw in there by Salato Muturi. Papa Nguvu retain the ball. Quickly get out, Mike Wanjala, pass it to Ken Mosetti. Ken Mosetti has been absolutely devastating every time he's been having a ball carry, requiring at least three to four defenders to bring him down. Penalty advantage there to Papa Nguvu. Quick take. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain Jimmy Mwangi, who made the tackle there for UAP Kifaru, was not 10 meters from, from the mark. Well, Ref referee elected to call for it now. Hillary, we have three minutes of time out. to play. Dead. What would you do gone. in this situation? Did you figure it out, time gone. Let's just look time at it gone. hypothetically, from the Kifaru side, from the Papa side. Um, I, 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 I am a forward. I would look for the line out and drive in there. But then again, what would I do? 
there comes the try, the first try of the match. And Gubu Papa are in the lead for the first time in this game. The try coming from uh, shot number 13. Bushmwale. Bushmwale, former student of Kakamega High School. Voted young player of the year last year. I mean, where was he the entire game? He just he looked like he burst on to the limelight from nowhere. Had the great awareness, kept the ball into his two hands. Has got a gap and utilized it. Here, Fiki Faru must literally just be gutted right now. Well, conversion to come. It's 8 6 at the moment. And uh, there's still all to play for, Hillary. And this is perhaps what I was talking about earlier. The clouds actually settled, and uh, within the last six or so minutes, you've seen some free-flowing rugby, which is definitely a much more better show than what we were seeing when the rains had actually, the clouds had actually opened and the rain was pouring. There's that, and uh, Hillary, there's also, you'd have to admit, uh, Gubu Papa have taken ages to settle into this game. Um, I think they've still, they've been disjointed, but at the end of the day, a win is a win. Um, I don't want to be presumptuous because we still have about two minutes to play. But they're in the lead and should it stay this way, they'll take it as it comes. For I Kiparu, they just have to keep fighting. I think looking at their body language and looking at the referee's body language, they perhaps seem to be aware of something that we are not. Perhaps the referee already called for the last call because they're looking extremely ecstatic. If you look at where they're still all class at the center of the pitch, it would appear that that was the last move of the game. Michael Wanjala with the conversion. It's wide. 8-6, the scores remain. And that is a full-time score. Gubu Papa have come from behind. They're doing a celebrity dig there. They deserve it. They've come from behind to beat. You were picking Baru 8 6. And with this result, Hillary, Ngubu Papa are through to the semi final of the 2014 Bamburi Rugby Super Series. Kifaru still have a very tricky encounter against Renzori on May 24 in Nakuru. Your take on the game, Hillary. Hard fought encounter there. Of course, you've got to feel it for you, Epiki Faru. They were a very disciplined side the entire game. Papa and Gubu were their own worst enemies, just, you know, placing a litany of errors that made the game much harder than they should have been for themselves. Of course, congratulations to Papa Ngubu, commiserations to Yopi Kifaru. And uh, Mike, I think for the game on 24th against uh, Ruenzori, I am pretty certain that Yopi Kifaru actually have a fighting chance. They do, they do indeed. They certainly do. I want to talk to the I was going to talk to you first. We'll take a short break and we'll be back. Where is she going? You're the No, 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 no. no. She was. <laughs> No. Can you watch that game there? This thing has gone off. I am to find it. You stand there. The other captain is here. Stand on it. Smile up under you. Vale. Nikimaliza na wewe, uende hivyo eh. Sawa. Alafu huyu ataingia. Sawa. You'll come to that side. Ah, pause that. Kuja tu karibu. Yeah. Then there is a sponsor there coming. Another sponsor. Na hii kitu sijui. Simame mbele kidogo eh. Tumeambiwa tusimame mbele.
To the Bamburi Rugby Super Series 2014, we have just witnessed the second match uh, between Papanguvu and Kifaru. I have with me here Rocky Aguka, the captain of the losing team. Aguka, your comment, Sonia, yet so far? Uh, it was a good match. Uh, all I can say is the best team won. Well, you defended very well for long periods. Yeah, uh, probably uh, we lost heads just before the end of the game, the last few minutes, and there was a break, and that was it. Yeah. yeah. So you have to win your next match? Yeah, we have to win our next match. Good luck. Proceed. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we now have the winning captain, Alan Omuka. Yeah. Alan. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> you left it very late. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough task. Uh, I have to say that um, the guys from Kifaru, they gave us a hard fight. And um, it was tough, it was tough. We won it at the last minute, but um, I think uh, there were a few nitty gritties. Um, things didn't go away. Uh, I think we tried playing too hard. Uh, we thought it was an easy game. We came uh, into the game uh, thinking it would be easy. Yes. You have now qualified for the semi-finals. I'm yeah. sure you are looking forward to whichever team you're going to meet. Yeah, whichever team comes up. Uh, I think we have a, we have, we have a two-week break. Uh, when we come back, we want us to restructure, uh, work harder, because uh, in the semis, there's no room for mistakes. There's no room for error, and we need to play hard. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. Cheers. Okay. okay. I have now with me here um, Susan Maingi. Uh, as a director of Bamburi Rugby Super Series. She's a director of Bamburi Cement Company, uh, the sponsors of the, the title sponsors of Bamburi. Uh, Susan, um, I can't count the number of years that uh, Bamburi has been associated with this tournament. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, thank you, Agre, and thank you all of you for being here. This is a fantastic thank, and I think I want to thank the Kakamega County, who have supported um, sports and ourselves. We've worked very well on partnership to host this tournament here in Kakamega. This is the 12th year, by the way, Agre, that we've been sponsoring the Super Series, and you can see we're bringing it to the counties. And um, from the curtain raiser and from this match today, you can see how the game of rugby is going to the grassroots, and we want to continue developing it. Yes, uh, Bamburi has been in Western Kenya before, but this is the first time they are in Kakamega, and this is none other than Kakamega High School. What are your thoughts of the venue and uh, everything that goes with it, and especially the fact that now we have these counties that are supporting the game? Uh, I think it's a testament that the Kakamega County, and including the governor, who have been extremely supportive, and we have here with us here the deputy governor of Kakamega County, who's actually here watching the game. So it shows that the support is there, and people like Bamburi Cement are ready to support the counties in this development so it's fantastic thank you very much thank Susan. you very much all right okay now the tournament kusha <laughs> i wanted to help but i swear we are going to <laughs>